Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. Welcome to this week's supply and demand for us and goal fundamental and technical analysis. So let's get into the week ahead, uh, starting the 17th of July and the release of the latest UK CPI report for June would attract more attention than normal in light of the ongoing hawkish repricing of the Bank of England rate hike expectations. And you've seen that recently in the market, which we'll get into when we get into the technical side of things. The latest CPI report from Canada, New Zealand and Eurozone in Japan will also be released in the week ahead. The Bank of Canada has expressed disappointment recently that core inflation is coming down more slowly than expected with three month rates running around 3.5 to 4% since last September. And in contrast to that, the RBNZ, which is the Reserve Bank of New Zealand, has just uh, paused their hiking cycle and further evidence of slowing inflation alongside recessionary conditions in New Zealand would reinforce expectations that the hiking cycle is over and bring forward rate cut expectations. And so the latest CPI report from Japan is unlikely to materially alter expectations ahead of the Bank of Japan's upcoming policy meeting on the 28th of July and the Bank of Japan is already expecting or expected, sorry, to raise their inflation forecast this year. And this is from the latest MUFG report. So lots of uh, market moving news um, on uh, on inflation um, and some bank um, central bank announcements. So getting into some technicals and uh, some further fundamentals on things and starting off on the dollar index and the dollar uh, this week or last week I should say um, has really kind of suffered in terms of um, devaluation um, which actually um, ironically is what the central bank really kind of want in terms of inflation going in the right direction. So um, we had this week um, sorry, not China, uh, the US inflation hit two-year lows, giving hope for an end to Fed hikes. So the Fed's job is actually to get inflation down to a 2% target and inflation is trending in that direction. And as long as it keeps trending in that direction, the Federal Reserve are less likely to hike rates and hiking rates typically supports a currency. And when I say supports, meaning it, it, the effect of a rate hike is to appreciate a currency to bring down inflation but inflation is already coming down they don't have to um to high crates right and so um that's the hope right is that the end of fed hikes is coming soon um but uh, the fed have kind of pushed back slightly and said uh, fed open are, are open to another rate hike after expected increase this month and so officials say it's too soon to declare victory over inflation investors but in july rate hike will be the Fed's last. And so that's what's happening on a price chart is that the market is pricing out, I guess, two rate hikes, which was um, what was expected to now price in maybe one more. And so if we zoom out a bit further, dollar index coming down to what that 99 area. And so let's see what uh, demand zones, if you are looking at demand, are in this area of around 99-ish probably somewhere back in April 2022 and uh, around here as well. So we could see, actually, I think this might have pushed just below that. Um, yeah, so maybe you're looking at prices hovering somewhere around there because there is some long-term support and resistance in that zone as well. Uh, so that may support the, um, uh, the dollar just technically but I think fundamentally the, the path for least resistance is probably now looking to the downside. So I personally think any uh, moves back, any pullbacks on the dollar, right, are going to be uh, shorting opportunities, right, um, into some sort of supply zone. On the, on the dollar index, the nearest supply zone is actually going to be all the way up into the uh, 102. So unless you get something like that, or if you get lower highs and lower lows being made, what you would do is just use that as a confluence into some sort of supply zone on a um, on a forex pair like the dollar yen or maybe you know um, Australian dollar US dollar to look for um, confluence levels uh, with uh, shorting the the dollar. So um, so yeah, it looked like the um, 
the, the hedge funds as well uh, are abandoning their bullish dollar bets on peak Fed speculation. So leverage funds go to net short dollar for the first time since March and US inflation report. Um, this was before the inflation uh, report and it was talking about the US inflation was the next big risk for markets and that turned out to be uh, true, right? So inflation came out, I think it was the, the Wednesday and pretty much drove prices uh, to the downside. So as long as the market is pricing out rate hikes, we could uh, see further dollar uh, depreciation and going back to the uh, China story China's economy is struggling to gain traction and that actually could support the dollar based off of risk off sentiment global growth uh, slowing down and if China are slowing and struggling to gain traction and their economy is then money tends to flow into more safe haven currencies which is basically like the dollar right and so that could be a supporting factor in um, you know dollar downside, but I do think any pullbacks into areas um, of supply or you know lower highs, lower lows, and the pullback into a lower high is going to be a really nice um, uh, opportunity to look for some short trades on uh, the dollar. <clears throat> Uh, dollar yen um, and again this week and into from last week we've just seen the dollar uh, kind of you know uh, devaluing in price and the yen in fact uh, increase in value over there was speculation went over it last week on the fact that the Bank of Japan could adjust monetary policy sooner rather than later um, and so the market has priced that in alongside obviously some some um, of pricing out of the uh, dollar uh, rate hikes. And so um, let's see what happens at the moment. We still, uh, technically we do have a nice area of um, resistance as well as support within that demand zone, which adds some confluence. So, but if you are looking to buy the dollar, that would be a nice area to look to buy the dollar. I think again, um, sell trades on the dollar you're looking uh, at either a pullback into that area there or at least a lower high lower low to be made and then a pullback into the uh, supply zone so that demand zone would have to be kind of taken out if you're looking at buy, going uh, short on the dollar yen buying the yen if you're looking to actually potentially get involved in uh, buying the dollar then uh, I think this area is quite nice uh, and this price zone at the 138 is actually quite decent for a potential buy technically or down into the 135s uh, for a potential buy on the dollar. Uh, dollar Swiss, and again, we've just seen this level from uh, December 2020, um, was it 2020? January 2021, yeah. Um, just totally get taken out <clears throat> based off of, again, dollar depreciation. So um, rather than looking at anything even longer term and going back further than that, what I would probably do if you're looking to get short again is look for either massive like that's that's about what's that uh five that's a good 500 pip pullback I'm not sure that's going to happen anytime soon so but you will probably see some sort of um maybe move back into you know a level and start to create that kind of move where you get um either lower highs lower lows or um, higher lows, higher highs, then a break of some sort of structure and then move back up into that zone where we get a, an opportunity to short. But for now, um, going um, going short, I think that the area that most traders would look towards a short is going to be the underside of either that zone there or probably that ultimate zone there is where traders are going to look towards uh, going short. But um, I like to look for uh, supply zones and demand zones first. And then, uh, you know, any kind of support and resistance is confluence. Uh, it's, it's kind of secondary. So wait for price to prove that there is supply there, then look for a pullback into uh, that supply zone. So I think those really are the, uh, the options. But for now, I think this week is going <clears> to, <throat> we'll see how it plays out. Again, the Swiss franc are still looking uh, to high crates uh, and are uh, quite hawkish, even though they have reached their 2% target. Uh, moving on to the dollar CAD and the Canadian dollar. Um, again, this week, 
um, strengthening and then on Friday we had a bit of a um, massive uh, like an outside candle um, move and I think that's probably anticipation of the potential um, inflation numbers that coming out inflation year on year forecasted to come down to 3% um, and the previous was 3.4 so it is trending lower but as we said at the beginning of this video it's about the pace of inflation coming down that will determine whether the Bank of Canada will continue to hike rates um, or not. So I think if um, inflation does stay sticky or come in higher than expected, then the Bank of Canada will continue to hike rates, which should push prices either you know to the downside or you're looking at you know maybe move up to that area there before going lower. There is actually a supply zone around here as well. <clears throat> Or dragging it down to that zone there so um so yeah that's where you know the trading opportunities are at the moment again you do have a decent area of uh support and resistance within that zone there so uh, that adds a little bit of confluence to your trades if you do want to get short on the um on the dollar cad and buying a canadian dollar but it all depends on what happens with inflation because inflation comes in lower than expected then any kind of rate hikes going forward for the Canadian dollar are going to be priced out of the market. And you're likely to see uh, the, the, the Canadian dollar actually sell off across the board, just like you've seen with the uh, with the US dollar. Now, the New Zealand dollar um, has benefited not really from, um, you know, its own strength, but just from the weakness of the US dollar. And we've seen it actually come all the way up to uh, this supply zone here. Stop hunting a little bit above that level, and then you've got another zone right above there. So um, this pair goes higher just based off of really kind of dollar weakness. But um, I wouldn't necessarily be buying the New Zealand dollar unless um, inflation does come out this week. And sorry, one second. Yeah, inflation does come out this week. And remain sticky, yeah, because again, the um, the, the RBNZ are going to have to potentially look to high rates or reintroducing hiking, hiking rates after holding rates if inflation is remaining a problem. So let's see what happens. So the, the most obvious opportunity is really either down to the 62s uh, for a long trade or make prices make higher highs and a pullback into uh, that demand zone, which would have been created. Um, so that's really where we are. If you're looking to buy the New Zealand dollar against the uh, US dollar, uh, going on to the pound, and the pound has reached uh, some targets. I know um, a few months ago uh, there was reports that it could reach the 130s, and it eventually did. So those forecasts were actually quite uh, well and came in correct, right? And but the pound, um, although I am bullish on the pound in the short term. And they did have some good uh, data. So UK economy stronger than expected during coronation holiday figures will return the focus to inflation and wages and outlook for stagnant spiraling growth in coming months. So um, short term wise data came out, which was quite decent. But <clears throat> and also, sorry, we had um, the uh, UK wage data keep spotlight on the Bank of England rate hikes. And so um, wage data being an inflation measure. And so if wages, if wage inflation is going higher it, it contributes to overall inflation and um, inflation really wants to um, the bank wants to, inflation to come down right so UK wages rose more than expected to a level that Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey said is fueling inflation maintaining pressure for higher interest rates and so um, yeah in the short term you have uh, the Bank of England looking to hike rates, which should appreciate the currency. Whereas, for example, the um, you had recent data for the US, which came in, um, uh, inflation data came in lower, right? So you have a divergence there between, um, you know, central bank policy, at least in the short term, which is driving the, uh, um, the pound dollar uh, to the upside. Now, one of the downsides to uh, hiking rates um, and, and the high inflation is that it weighs on the economy. So UK's inflation crisis is expected to last another 10 months. So the average household 
to be £2,300 worst off, says report and researchers predict £65 billion wiped off spending power. So cost of living crisis still has early, sorry, still uh, has nearly a year to run with calculations showing that the average household will be £2,300 worse off uh, by the time inflation eases. So inflation expected to remain sticky, which will have a knock-on effect on the economy. And if the economy starts to contract, then the UK is in um, may start to be in a, in, in a worse situation, stagflation, and uh, the market may actually start to um, uh, uh, kind of price out maybe the bullishness um, that they kind of uh, have been on the on the uh, pounds so uh, just be uh, be mindful of that but as we see you know we've just seen prices go from strength to strength again you're looking for either a massive pullback down to these one uh, two six fives or again higher highs to come in and then a pullback or you could see prices do something like this make a new high and then pull back to that kind of demand zone so again this week we do have for the pound we have inflation uh year on year so what we're looking towards there is if inflation starts to come down uh, more than expected so forecast is six is 8.2 if it comes down to maybe eight or even into the sevens in fact what you may see is um is the is the pound start to sell off in fact because then the Bank of England, the market will price out, you know, uh, Bank of England, uh, uh, the need for more aggressive hikes. So that's going to be uh, quite uh, an important um, a data point uh, to watch this week. And um, yeah, just wanted to give a, a bit of a shout out to uh, Sunny1994, who's in the uh, Trading 180 Mentoring Group. And he said, uh, hello, everyone. I hope you're all doing well. Just wanted to share some exciting news with you. After months of hard work, dedication, and learning from my trading experiences, I'm thrilled to announce that I have finally reached a break-even point in my trading journey. It hasn't been an easy road, and there were definitely some ups and downs along the way. However, with the support and knowledge shared within this fantastic trading group, I was able to stay focused and push through the challenges. Uh, he wants to express the de his deepest gratitude to all of us who have provided valuable insights, advice, encouragement throughout the process and our contributions have played a significant role in the man in, in uh, his growth as a trader and he couldn't have achieved this milestone without our help while reaching break even is an accomplishment and it absolutely is he understands that there's still much to go uh, much more to learn and improve upon and his next step is to stay break even for as long as possible and make some profits where possible it just feels so amazing to finally reach this milestone um, after losing for so long and he also says that I have uh, consistently gone above and beyond to share my wisdom and answer questions and provide me um, or him with the tools to succeed and he's truly grateful for uh, my mentorship and the impact um, he's, I'm having on his trading journey and I just want to say again uh, congratulations to Sunny for reaching break even now many people might think that break even um, isn't um, a major achievement um, if you go on YouTube you know it's all about doubling tripling quadrupling accounts in a, in a short space of time which isn't necessarily the the um, realistic in in trading and uh, if you can get yourself to break even you're at a really really great point especially from losing um a losing position and um it can only get better from here so um it's just about um eliminating the um you know the trades that you don't necessarily need to take maximizing uh, the trades that you are in um and your profitability and um you know the re the, the the, the reality of trading is is that you will get break even days weeks months and even break even years right but ultimately um you know um we're here as a, as a group to support each other and get everybody to profitability if you put in the work and it just shows that sunny has been putting in the work and um you know it's a great achievement and well done um break even is uh better than probably 80 percent of uh, the market because 80 percent of the market if you go into brokers um 
their websites and see the stats. Uh, it's maybe between seventy to eighty percent lose money. So you're in a, um, uh, you know, maybe the top twenty, top twenty five percent of people that are at least uh, breaking even. And so uh, now it's to get him to uh, profitability. So congratulations on that. And also as well, you can watch um, several of my uh, forex student mentoring um, interviews. Um, I have a, a playlist here. Um, that you can um, look towards and I'll put that in the top right hand side of the uh, screen right now so you can click on that and uh, watch some of uh, what the students have been achieving in the Trading 180 mentoring group. So moving on to the Euro dollar and the Euro dollar um, again strength to strength right um dollar weakness is probably the, the more driving factor of this uh, uh short term uh, the, the recent price action to the upside um i'm not necessarily convinced that the euro is um an absolute out and out buy but in comparison um to when it comes to inflation and uh, central bank rate hikes uh, you're seeing that the ECB really are the one of the most hawkish central banks, and so, yeah, it wasn't necessarily. Although technically, <clears throat> although technically this was a decent area to look for some short trades, you would have had to have believed that inflation was to remain sticky for the U.S. dollar, which it actually didn't. Obviously, it came out, you know, lower than expected. PPI came out lower. Um, and uh, inflation rate, the inflation uh, measures came out lower than expected, which then drove prices uh, a lot higher. So as I always say, um, you know, that um, there's no technical level that's going to stand in the way of fundamentals, right? You need fundamentals um, on your side when taking any kind of technical trades because there are things going on beyond the price chart um, that move uh, the, the actual price, right? Prices are moving because there's an Elliott wave, one, two, three, four, five. It's nonsense. It's more, um, it's, it's to do with what the market values uh, currency exchange rate at, and that's driven by um, many things, but the, the, the main thing is uh, central bank uh, policy. And so, um, yep, that trade obviously didn't work out if you got short. So now it's really, again, looking for kind of pullbacks into areas. You can look for a pullback into some sort of uh, resistance zone, which would be somewhere around here. But from a supply, uh, from a demand perspective, there's no really demand here. So I would wait for demand um, to uh, pretty much appear on a price chart and then look for any kind of pullbacks into that demand zone. So let's see what happens there. Um, but yeah, fundamentally, we have um, the ECB stuck with 25 basis point uh, June hike after call for more. So uh, core inflation still too fast account of June meeting shows and officials plan to raise interest rates again on July the 27th. And so, um, yeah, they are they're still very, uh, very hawkish looking to hike in, uh, in also September. And so, um, whereas, you know, the uh, Fed are looking to uh, potentially or the market are thinking that the Fed are not going to hike um, uh, after their next uh, meeting. So we have a bit of a divergence there. And so I think for now that the, the, uh, the ECB is a buy, unless something again uh, changes as, as a, a surprise. And I think one of the main surprises that may be on the horizon is if the GDP data comes out for the euro um, and it comes out as uh, in the contraction, so a negative growth again, and the euro are re kind of remain in a recession, that may put a cap up to the upside of the uh, um, the euro dollar. So I think we're already stretched, so I wouldn't necessarily look to buy at highs, looking for pullbacks, proof of demand, and then look for a pullback if the data supports that. Um, narrative. So um, the euro yen, we did get a pullback down deep into the lower end of this uh, demand zone here, higher lows, higher highs being made. So you can see it kind of here where you had high, low, and then high, low, high prices pull back into that. There's a bit of a move to the upside, pull back into this demand zone, and then has moved to the upside again. So um, 
yeah, the euro. I would I would expect the euro to appreciate against the yen um, at least in the short term. Reason being is because the Bank of Japan haven't uh, switched policy, but in anticipation of the Bank of Japan potentially um, uh, adjusting their yield curve control, you could have a situation where prices could start to turn around if they do then i expect actually prices to come probably way down to this 150s because it will be a shock um to the market but um yeah i think any pullbacks into these highs um in anticipation of some sort of change to monetary policy um getting ahead of that is actually um a riskier trade but there's lots of potential downside in that but for now i think the um the path of least resistance is to buy the euro against the yen and so uh there yeah, those are your options at the moment let me uh let me just pull that down to here so we, it's not necessarily the strongest area of demand at the moment there is demand there but i think we'll pull back into the one five freeze i think is going to be decent for a potential buy for the euro if not then all the way down to the 150s are going to be where the next zone potentially is unless of course we get some sort of proof of value within that zone um moving towards the euro pound and the euro pound again two central banks being quite hawkish i said i think last week i expected prices to kind of um go into this uh, this auction this range what traders would describe as a range where you got you know prices aren't necessarily trending and um i was right so Again, when you get two central banks that are uh, are competing, two strong central banks, then you tend to have an auction um, and a ranging market. Whereas if you have two central banks that are um, one is stronger than the other or hiking, then you tend to get a trending market. So, yeah, uh, I think for now the nearest demand zone is somewhere around there. Um, again, I, I would probably say that absolute highs you'd have to look for for a decent area to look for short trades if you want to buy the British pound against the euro and pull back into these lows before looking at getting long on the euro but not really a pair I'm interested at all in trading but those are the uh, technical options that you have on this currency pair Aussie uh, US dollar and again the US dollar um, being uh, beaten up and uh, so the uh, prices uh, to the upside, the Australian dollar was appreciated based off of some uh, some dollar strength. Um, I'm sorry, dollar weakness, but also as well, the RBA um, are looking to potentially hike. They did a hawkish hold uh, maybe a week or two ago, and, um, and so the market is now pricing in some potential hikes. So any pullbacks into that zone there, I think, is decent. Or if you get a higher high and then a move back into that higher low that's going to be a really nice area to look for some long trades if you think the Australian dollar is a buy. Um, for a sell trade, I think this is a really nice technical level at the moment. And um, it's got lots of confluence there of support and resistance. It's even had a previous uh, supply zone. That supply zone has been touched actually uh, several times, so I wouldn't expect it to necessarily uh, remain strong. Um, the more times the level is touched, the weaker it becomes. <clears throat> and so, I would expect prices to probably continue to the upside as as long as the uh, the Fed remain a bit more dovish, uh, or or the market thinks that the Fed are not going to hike twice, um, and the RBA actually are um, going to hike twice to try and get inflation to the downside. So I think any moves to the upside are probably where the path of least resistance is. <clears throat> and finally, gold and gold benefiting from uh, lowering inflation, which it seems to be a bit strange, right? Because gold is a hedge against inflation historically, but um, a weak dollar tends to push gold prices to the upside. So any pullbacks into uh, this demand zone, if anyone did get involved in this level, uh, we'd point this out from obviously a couple of weeks ago, really nice uh, buy technically against that zone and our prices have actually worked out so any pullbacks into this area here the one uh, the 19 uh, 10s 1913s all the way down to maybe the 1893s to the absolute lows I think a decent buying opportunities if you think that the dollar is going to continue uh, to be weak in the future if you do think that there's an opportunity to buy the dollar um, 
a short gold, then I do think that you may want to look for prices to go somewhere around the 1980s, maybe just above there, then look for uh, some sort of short trade around the uh, the 1985s. And so, yeah, <clears throat> that's where we are with gold. Uh, did I have any news on gold? I don't think I did. Uh, China, I think, actually, I think, here we go. Is it China gold? Uh, surge in China's demand for gold is slowing as economy stumbles. So there is China um, Central Bank was buying gold, I think a few weeks ago, a report came out and it looks like they still are. So this is the latest report from June the 19th. Uh, the JIT is affecting the world's second biggest economy are starting to feed through into China's gold market. And so um, that also is going to potentially support, you know, gold prices uh, going forward. But also as well, I think it actually might still support the, um, uh, the, the the US dollar as well. So this is a bit of a tricky trade, to be fair, because um, if the world is worried about global growth in China, um, uh, the Chinese economy weakening, then in fact, money typically tends to flow into the, um, the US dollar. So let's see um, what happens there. But either way, I do think that um, with the dollar, if the dollar continues to weaken, then any pullbacks into uh, demand zones for gold should be potential buys. All right, so that's it for this week. I uh, hope you have a great trading week. Take care and speak to you all soon. Till the next video.